You might be wondering if it's still possible to make money in the online space. The online business space is not exactly <laughs> slow. <laughs> there's a lot of people, there's a lot of competition. It's a very saturated market. So I don't blame you if you're wondering how to make money in the online space and if it's even still possible. Now, I made $180,000 in my first year of business and that was in a very saturated space that was in a competitive market. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how. So my name is Sarah Mae Ives. Thank you so much for being here, for visiting my channel and for checking out what I have to say. I teach women how to have highly profitable Facebook and Instagram advertising businesses. It is simply one of the best skills to know online. And the cool thing about it is you don't have to practice it for that long before you can actually get your first client. The norm is around 90 days, sometimes less. So I'm really passionate about this kind of business because it's fun, creative, and collaborative. You work with people and it's about exciting things. So if you wanna learn more about how to do that, I have a free guide below that you can link to and download for free. Um, otherwise, if you like the channel, if you like the content and what I'm talking about, please consider supporting it by subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to turn on your notifications bell because I do have weekly videos. Okay, so thank you so much for being here. We're gonna dive into the topic of today's presentation, which is how did I make $180,000 in my first year in a highly competitive space? Okay, number one, I learned a valued skill. This is something that people can sometimes overlook and I don't blame you either because there's a lot of stuff about how we should start a passion business and that always doesn't have the best recipe for success. For example, my passion business at the beginning was raw food. I loved eating raw. I loved helping people eat healthier. A lot of people asked me questions about how to eat raw. So I thought, well, naturally, this is that one in a million special passion businesses that I should start. Actually, it didn't pay that well. Um, in fact, it was a skill that that people would pay a little bit for, but not a lot. So when I came back into the business scene in 2017, after my first business failure, one of the main things I decided was I was actually gonna learn a skill that was valued, as opposed to just you know trying to enter this much broader scene of online business. So you wanna have a very valued skill that is very specific. You wanna be really niche. So in the case of advertising, you're running ads for other businesses. And even within the niche of advertising, there are sub niches, if you want to call them that. There are different, meaning there are different types of businesses that you can run ads for. There's local businesses, there's online businesses, there are, um, in, even in the online space, there are many different types of businesses as well. There are businesses selling goods, shoes, bags, purses, face creams, and there's also businesses selling coaching, like I am. So the first and most important ingredient to me making that much money in my first year and the year after I made more um, was learning a valued skill being focused and niched in terms of what I was offering. Okay, now what is the second step to my ingredient? Well, I'm an introvert and I'm shy, but I actually love talking to people and I loved talking to people on the phone. And one of the most crucial ingredients to my success in the first year was me not being afraid to have conversations about what I did and the service I offered and finding out if the person I was talking to would benefit from my services. Meaning I turned out to be pretty good at sales. And in fact, in the years since I've literally closed hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business. So I decided to learn how to sell my services. So it's great to know it. You also have to learn how to sell it and you have to be okay with putting yourself out there. And I know it's scary. I know it's terrifying. Everybody feels that way. Um, but you want to persist past that fear because it's not really a life worth living if we're not putting ourselves out there and taking risks uh, that are going to contribute to a better quality of life. Okay, so I learned the skill and I learned how to sell it. Three, I put myself out there. I actually already covered this one in the last bullet point, but I wasn't afraid of just putting myself out there and honestly not afraid of failing. Uh, there is a famous share quote that says, in order to get any anywhere in life, you have to be willing to look stupid. Um, and that was something that I was okay with. I was okay with getting started as a beginner. I was okay hopping on the phone with people when I wasn't even 100% certain in what I was doing, when I didn't even have a ton of experience. I was okay. Did I have some calls with people where I felt kind of dumb and I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. I did. Did it stop me? No, I kept going. So I built this inner resiliency just by keeping at it, just by persisting. So the most important thing is to really just put yourself out there and not be so afraid of failure. 
You know, when it comes to failure, we're really afraid of it because we don't want to be rejected. But that's our primal brain acting up. That's our primal core part of our brain and the limbic brain, I believe psychologists call it, which is that primal brain of when we were back in the forest and we saw a tiger and then we got a shot of adrenaline and cortisol and all types of other hormones that gave us the energy to move. We're not at that place anymore. You're probably on your phone or in front of your computer in a cozy place watching this video where you're very safe. So because of that, Starting a business is not nearly as scary as being in the forest with the tiger. So your brain is giving you the wrong message. Fear is not necessarily a bad thing. And in fact, sometimes it can be a sign that you're going after something that really matters to you. So it should feel scary. If it were easy, everybody would do it uh, because the reward is so great. You get to be your own business owner. You get to have more freedom, more money, etc. So you got to be okay with putting yourself out there. You got to flex your, I don't care myself. I don't care if I fail. I don't care if Sally and uh, Jackie down the street start talking bad about me. I really don't care what people think because other people's opinions do not pay the bills. Repeat that to yourself. Other people's opinions do not pay the bills. What's the next one? Four. I just did the work. I showed up and did the work. I didn't overanalyze. I didn't get overwhelmed. And a sub note or, or a sub tip of that tip is I also didn't get distracted because when I was learning the business, I made a conscious decision to follow the people that could help me. And that was only a couple of people. And I turned off myself to all of the rest. I didn't even take much other advice. And that is one of the most important things of when you're in that learning stage, that incubation stage of your business, there are so many people giving business business um, tips, advice, podcast channels, YouTube, just like this channel. And really when it comes down to it, those things can be good to a degree and then they can really distract you beyond that. So what I want you to do is focus on one or two people that really have the same type of business you have and focus on them and them only for that short period of time as you're learning. So you just have to do the work, schedule it in your calendar, do that work, just show up and you will get much further ahead than other people who stay in that debate mode. Most people truthfully don't do the work. A lot of people start businesses and then life happens. They get distracted, their babies are born, people pass away, jobs are lost. There's an endless supply of reasons why and you need to stay the course, stay Focus because a lot of people just don't do the work. So if you're that small majority, I should say minority, I'm sorry. If you're that minority of people who actually does the work, you will be successful. I can promise you that. And the other way that I made this $180,000, aside from learning a valued skill, aside from learning how to sell it, I put myself out there. I was okay to look like an idiot at the beginning and I did, but then overall I didn't because I got the skills and experience I needed and I was okay with doing the work. I was okay with short-term sacrifices. I worked like a dog that first year and it was happy doing it. Sure, there were days where I wanted to give up, but I persisted past those days and I rested, got out, and then got back at it. I just did the work. And that's really my second last point. I kept going even when I wanted to give up. And I also kept going when other people told me to give up. I didn't, I had some very supportive people in my life. I'm so grateful for my mom. Um, she was really my cheerleader and I met some incredible friends when I started my business and they were in extremely helpful for helping me stay the course. Community is super important. So if you can get into a community of people, it's super helpful helpful as well. There are days where you want to give up and that's okay. You have to keep going the course and that's what I did in that first year. I just kept going at it. Now my last point and arguably one of my most important points is that I valued my customers and I was rooted and I am rooted in a place of service. I truly wanted to help people. I truly want to help people today. That's why I'm doing this video. And when you are rooted in a place of service, your business is pure to a degree. You have pure business intent and you want to help people. And when you have those ingredients in your business, it is far more likely you're going to succeed. So after I learned my skill and I learned how to sell it and I got clients, what helped me stay successful and relevant is the fact that I treasured and I treasure my clients. I made sure that I was meeting their needs. I was communicating with them. I'm a big believer of communication. That's something that I've taught to the women that I teach how to do advertising businesses is one of the key ingredients to your success 
is keeping the lines of communication open, making sure that you're giving the product that your client wants and deserves and so they can be further ahead in their business. I really always come back to being in a place of service, wanting to provide value and just showing up for your customer. And that is so much more important than being the best advertiser in the whole planet. Who cares about being the number one advertiser? As long as you're rooted in a place of service and you're gonna help people, you're gonna get much further ahead than the people that don't care. So I hope that these tips have helped you to realize some of the crucial ingredients that went into my first year of business and why I was able to make so much money. Um, if you have any comments, questions, I would love to hear from you. And uh, if you have a friend or family, like I said, share it. I can't wait to see you back here next week. And I hope this video was valuable. And also, if you have other ideas for what I could talk about, please put that in the comment below because I would love to speak to other questions, concerns that you guys are having. Alrighty, have an awesome week and I will see you next week. Next week.